Hi, we're going to take a look at the chapter atomic structure, specifically from the point of view of the J examination. Now, in the J main exam, almost every year, every year at least one question is asked from atomic structure. The J advanced exam in the last few years, this is how it looked like. Right? 2016, there was one question. 2017, there were three questions. And this was the marks weighted given to them. Most of this was on the idea of the solution to the Schrodinger wave equation. Yeah? Angular uh, probability, the shapes of orbitals and things like that. But besides these, what has happened in the last few years? The most important concepts from this chapter that are generally tested in the main as well as the advanced exams are in front of you right now. There's the classical theory of Bohr's and all of that. Then you have Planck's equation, uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and many other things all the way up to Schrodinger's equation and the solution, which gives us the shapes of orbitals and the currently uh, modern quantum mechanical theory. What we're going to do is we're going to solve some really interesting questions that will help you prepare better for this chapter from the point of view of the JE exam. All right, so we have many graphs over here, uh, PQ, RS, and we need to match it with well, what are the y and the x axis of these graphs, uh, five things over here. And the options that you need to choose from are in front of you right now. Um, so this is an interesting question. Let's go to the basics. What are we really testing in this question? Firstly, the idea of photoelectric effect, the work function thing, yeah? So there's some incident energy phi, then phi naught is the work function, if it is greater than that, then some electrons are ejected, which will have some kinetic energy. That's what this equation tells us. Yeah. So if I'm looking primarily at the kinetic energy of the electrons, that will simply be equal to phi minus phi naught, another form of the same equation. That's one idea we need to use through this question. The other idea is uh, Rydberg's equation. Yeah. When emission happens specifically, because that's what is asked in this question. We'll focus on that. Here it is. Wave number is equal to, you know, this expression over here, 1 by n squares in a denominator, uh, 1 by n squares on this side, uh, the denominator has n square, which is nf, the final and the initial thing. Remember, nf is going to be lower than ni, the initial, num uh, initial state, because emission is happening. Look at this diagram in front of you, yeah, you have the energy levels over here. The blue line shows that some atom, uh, some electron is being excited and sent up to a higher energy level. Now, once it's at the high energy level, it falls down. Now, once it falls down, the extra energy is given off as radiation. Yeah. So that's the emission that we're talking about. I know it's a bit of theory, but I thought I should revise this. It's really important to understand uh, what's happening behind the scenes before we go ahead and do this. Okay. So yeah, we've got all the theory settled. Let's look at the, well, both of these things in a little bit more detail. So when electrons are released, only and only if, the incident energy phi is greater than phi naught. And the most important thing, if one photon strikes, then one electron is released. So, this should give you a really, really big hint right here. As the incident energy increases, then the kinetic energy of the electrons increases. As the number of photons increases, number of electrons increases. Okay, these are two separate things. Both of these are linear, linear you know, relationships, but they are entirely different things. Keep this in mind. If you have understood this, or if you already knew this, you would know the answer right away. Well, answer as in you'll be able to figure out which ones matches where and then mix and match the options. Okay. So look at the graphs over here. This should this should make sense right away, right? You have incident energy on the x-axis of both of these. What's gonna happen? Kinetic energy of electrons. Well, it's going to be a linear relationship and it's going to start a little bit away from the, you know, the origin point. So a little bit to this side. Why? Because well, that's where the work function lies. They're fine. Not only if the energy is greater than that, electrons are released. So kinetic energy of electrons is directly proportional to the incident energy. After this fine not thing. Yeah. What about number of electrons? I don't care. No electrons after until some point. Well, the fine not thing right after that, suddenly there are electrons. The number doesn't change because I change incident energy. Now you know that S matches is 5 and R matches is 4. For sure. Okay, don't worry. Look at, don't look at the options right now. Let's do this theory. I'm really enjoying this and you should too. Uh, should. You look at this, the next graph. Yeah. Intensity of light versus the same two parameters on the y-axis. Now, intensity. When the intensity increases, number of photons increases. Yeah. 
simple thing is something you should be familiar with intensity is going to have absolutely no effect on energy remember the two things that we said were independent so as in intensity of light increases kinetic energy of energy of electrons is not going to change it's going to be a constant number constant value but as the intensity increases number of electrons increase is going to well number of electrons release is going to increase linearly that's the graph that matches over here so q matches one for sure p matches with two this is your biggest hint right here hold on to this let's look at the theory behind the wave number versus 1 by nf square when emission happens let's do that although you can solve it even without this information yeah this entire thing entire question what happens here you never talk about a graph do you when you look at this expression you can talk about it here because you're plotting wave number versus 1 by nf square so ni the initial number is fixed that's what that means it's a constant so how would the graph look like check it out look exactly like this this is a similar graph that you've seen in the options yeah the pqrs it's one of those graphs itself how can i be so sure about this well if the initial and final number of <laughs> energy level is the same then that's the starting point there i know it's a little confusing because you're plotting 1 by n, n, n square and not n so it's a little difficult to visualize but this is basic math don't try and uh, you know figure out the physical significance of this graph look at it just as an expression it fits beautifully then so this is the way the graph would look like and uh, this is very similar to the kinetic energy being equal to phi minus phi naught yeah very very similar to that look at these two equations so s definitely matches only with 3 now this is the word of caution here not only with 3 but s matches with 3 for sure okay only is a strong term to use here now here's a word of caution if you look at the options this is the trick i was talking about p either matches with 1 or 2 and q is the other way around that's what the options are telling us so if you figure this out you can already eliminate uh, a few options so going by the first logic that we started off with you can eliminate options a and d right away now r matches with 4 it's similar to q matching with 1 right so i'm not so sure about even if you're not so sure about rydberg's equation and how the graph looks you can still get the answer why because you know that s does does not definitely match with 4 so the answer is option b 100% right so be smart about questions like this usually when this sort of question comes you can there's always a trick when you can do it quickly but hey if you enjoy solving it like i do you can still go through the motions and figure out the theory just like we did answer is option b in this question we are given that lambda max to lambda min the ratio is 1.8 and that's literally all we have we need to figure out what the first excited state of such an electron is going to be what is the you know energy level of this electron what do we do here we talk about emission right and uh, so how would you get lambda min and lambda max that's the only thing you need to know and once you have that the simple math here just some expressions you get lambda min the minimum value would be when energy is maximum right so this is just the idea that energy is proportional to frequency and inversely proportional to lambda that's it so from rydberg's equation yeah, i have written 1 by lambda equals this expression here i take the initial uh, energy level to be infinite yeah and that way the energy will be maximum it comes from the energy level falls down to this so that way this expression gives you the lambda min value yeah i've taken the final uh, thing to be x that's the energy level of interest here now what's the maximum lambda which is the minimum energy possible take it to the next energy level and make it drop from there so x and x plus 1 are going to be your two energy levels x final and x plus 1 initial fix this put this into rydberg's equation there you go you have the two expressions in terms of just one variable x of lambda min and lambda max divide them both lambda max by lambda min and you are supposed to get 1.8 from here on it's just a little bit of quadratic equations yeah you can choose to do what i did which is uh, just simplify this as much as possible factorize it and get you get it uh, two roots yeah one root that does not make sense it's minus 0.4 and the other root is yeah two so that's my answer right there wait no it's not my answer has to be the first excited state so it's that state plus one so it's two plus one which is three that's the answer that's the just be careful about it your yeah, examiner is messing with you so don't take the bait answer is three uh a wrap up idea yeah you could also start with the initial state to be x minus 1 yeah because you need to get the final answer is whatever value you get plus 1 right so if i took uh 
this variable to x minus 1 in your calculation whatever x you get would be the answer directly yeah, that's one way to do it if you really like math and you could also solve the quadratic equation by using a discriminant uh, with using the by using the discriminant idea yeah that minus v plus or minus all of that but again in this it was not necessary because it's a simple simple factorization idea that you could have done uh, so yeah, couple of other things. If you like math and you're comfortable with, you could do this. Answer would still be the same. You get the answer to be three. This question asks you to find out the ratio of the maximum and the middle position of radial nodes for this sort of a hydrogen atom it follows this equation the psi function uh, as, a, as a function of x which x is basically uh, 2r by a0 a0 is the bore radius looks kind of scary but it's really not when do you get a radial node when the function psi becomes zero when the function becomes zero you know that e power minus x by 2 term is an exponential term it's probably it's a tricky thing let's leave that out look at the uh, the stuff over here is a constant so we're not worried about that either the expression inside yeah you have a quadratic equation and then there's another x minus one term over here this term if this entire thing if any of these things become zero then the entire uh, expression y equals whatever is going to become zero psi equals this is going to become zero so at radial node psi should be equal to zero and you need to just well solve this equation one simple solution is x minus one will be equal to zero so there is a radial node at x equals 1. Hmm. Okay. We're getting somewhere. What about this other quadratic equation? We can solve that too, right? Factorize it. And a simple thing gives you the roots of this to be 6 and 2. Yeah? Because x minus 2 into x minus 6 equals 0. Simple quadratic idea. x can be either 2 or 6. Making the whole function psi to be equal to 0. So you have three roots of this equation. 1, 2 and 6. Which means that at x equals 1, x equals 2 and x equals 6. There are radial nodes. We asked to find out the ratio of the maximum to the middle position of the radial nodes. Maximum is 6, middle is 2, right? Divide them both. Answer is 3. Alright, so this is a multiple answer correct question could have more than one correct answer. First two options talk about the energy of the Bohr orbit. And uh, the third one talks about the radius. And the fourth one again has some ideas about energy. So we'll start with energy. Let's discuss that, figure it out. There's kinetic and potential energy mentioned in these options. So but how do we figure out kinetic potential? I think we know what the total energy is, right? It has this expression as minus 13.6 Z square by N square in electron volts. Where does this come from? We need to know the basics of this to be able to solve this. Well, the total energy is going to be the sum of the kinetic and potential energy. Kinetic energy is usually half mv square and the potential energy happens to be minus mv square. Yeah. In numbers, it's 13.6 uh, z square by n square, kinetic, kinetic energy. And this guy here, the potential energy is negative 27.2 when you uh, times z square by n square. When you add these up, you get this value of negative 13.6 z square by n square. That's where this comes from. And that's what the examiner is testing. How is that? Well, the kinetic energy is going to be maximum when n is equal to 1. Why? It's, it has a positive value, right? And as you increase n, it keeps falling down. What about the potential energy? That also should have the maximum value, right? It's minus 27 point whatever. And as you increase n, it falls down. Sure, but it has a negative sign, which means the least, it's the most negative. Yeah, which means the smallest value when n is equal to 1. When would it have the maximum value? It's not tested, but when would it, ha would it have the maximum value? When n is infinite, yeah, the energy is zero. That's the highest possible potential energy. Yeah. So be careful about this. Once you have this sorted out, uh, let's go to the third option, the radius. Yeah? Radius is going to be proportional to what? It's proportional to n square by z. That's all you need. Uh, substitute the values of n and z in both of these uh, species given to us. And uh, yeah, sure, the second orbit would simply be four times as large as the first orbit. Yeah, you're not changing z, you're just changing uh, n. That's it. That's that. That one's correct. So that's not incorrect. That's not an answer. Yeah, be careful about this. The question is checking for the incorrect option, not the correct ones. Yeah. So, okay. The last one. It's interesting. 
says that all the energy spacex are the same so from n from uh, one to two maybe it's this much and two to three is also the same that's what it says well energy is quantized sure but not really equally what do i mean look at the energy expression it says that it's proportional to z square by n square so as n changes energy keeps reducing so if the initial energy that's what this diagram showing us here yeah initial energy maybe is from this much to this much next one is going to fall you know going to be much smaller the next one going to be even smaller and so on and so on so the spacing between the energy levels it becomes smaller so this is not equal energy so that's wrong so your incorrect options are b and d yeah i think the theory is pretty cool if you know the basics of uh, these ideas you should be able to solve this pretty quickly Okay, this question is testing if we know what time period is. That's what it. If you know what time period is supposed to be, or what it depends on, when I mean, you're talking about the Bose orbit, you can directly solve it. But it's cool. It's not something you're supposed expected to remember. You can derive it on the spot. What is time? It's distance by speed. Did I get that right? Yeah, it's distance by speed. In terms of Bohr stuff, what do you have? Distance could be r. Yeah, the circumference is two pi r, right? So it will be proportional to r divided by v, the velocity. Okay, so that's what t is going to be proportional to. It's going to be proportional to r by v. Once you have that in terms of n and z, we can do a direct substitution. This is a very very easy question, but it looks intimidating because what on earth is time period? You look at that and you get scared. It's really not. I'm going to help you. Yeah. Say all you need here is the idea of what energy is. And well, angular momentum. We can do that. Energy is half m v square, right? What does energy depend on? Depend on z square by n square. So v would be root of that, which is z by n. Now r. This is where the idea of r. If you remember it, cool. If you don't, do this. M v r angular momentum is n h by two pi. So there's v there again, and r is going to be dependent on n divided by v. From there, you get r depends on n square by z. I know I'm teaching you theory, but that's the point. My whole goal here is to tell you that you need very, very minimal theory to be able to do this. Just the basics, things that you would know for sure if you've gone through just the NCERT. Yeah, so very doable with just that information. Okay, so there you go. From here, you get uh, the expressions that z and n. How how r and v are dependent on z and n. Substitute that in the idea of time. Right, the time period is going to be proportional to r by v. Repeating that, which now gives us n cube by z square. There you go. You know the n values. You know the z values of these things. Substitute that. This is the last place where you could kind of mess up. Yeah. If you choose the wrong z values or wrong n value, you could get the other options. So you've done the hard work till here. Be diligent. Substitute and just check it once. Yeah. The answer is pretty direct. Is option B, which is thirty-two by twenty-seven. But again, always check because that's the sensible thing to do. For more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.